And so he like blows a gasket, you know, he has smoke coming out his ears and everything. Hey everybody, it is Chris back again with another sit down stand up and uh, I was reminded earlier this week that uh, a tremendous work anniversary came up for me uh, this past this past week. Uh, you know, Facebook has those memories um, that sometimes are great and other times not so great where, um, you know, they're reminded of things that happened a while ago, how many years ago. And this week was the 15th anniversary of probably my favorite work story in the history of my work life. So 15 years ago this week, uh, I was working at the now defunct. I can tell the story because I feel like the statute of limitations has run out. Uh, the now defunct Toys R Us. Uh, we used to have one here in town, worked there uh, until, uh, worked there for a while, worked there for uh, years uh, until uh, my schedule started to get um, messed with. Never mind, not the point. So, uh, one thing that, um, you know, there are a lot of little jobs, uh, to do at the Toys R Us, uh, with all retail jobs. Um, you know, there's, uh, but one of the main jobs at the end of the day was what they call a reshop. And what that is, is Toys R Us, for whatever reason, the manager, uh, was not that smart when it came to how retail works from a, an employee enjoyment standpoint so uh normally during the day at one of these bigger uh retail places um when people have returns or things are left on uh, shelves and are found later uh and then brought uh you know to the desk to the service desk or wherever um throughout the day several times uh that stuff will get put back on the shelf where it goes uh that's great for the customer uh, because then, you know, if, if something is just stuck in a cart or at the service desk uh, all day and you're in there shopping and you would have bought it, but then it's out, you can buy it during the day. Uh, but Toys R Us believed in saving all of that for the end of the day and then putting everything back on the shelf at the end of the day before everybody could go home after the store was closed. So uh, that was basically how it worked is the way that the store uh, would shut down. At, at the end of the day was, uh, you know, we'd lock the doors, everything, and then there would be kind of two teams, and one team would go and uh, do all the paperwork, you know, the accounting, balance the, the cash register drawers and all that stuff, and the other team would go and do reshop, as they called it. So um, I was... Uh, I tried to always be as part of the reshop team because I, I found it fun. Like I would go as fast as I could because usually that was like when that was done, we got to go. Uh, so I would try and get that up as fast and as accurate as possible. So uh, around the holidays, uh, reshop was always really bad. And most days there would be like during the during the year, you'd have maybe one, maybe one. Uh, at worst, like one and a half carts uh, of reshop to put up, but usually it was less than one. But in the holidays, you would always get four, five, sometimes six. So it takes so much longer and the days were longer. So you really just wanted to go home, but you couldn't because you still had all the reshop to do. So there was one day uh, right before the holidays and uh, we were late with we were late leaving you know the the store has extended hours so we were open later than normal then you know so we get done with everything and the manager you know was all right so we're, we're done uh, the, the the store is closed so now i need half the people to do the reshop and half the people to do uh the the accounting stuff and then we'll be good so as part of the reshop team we put there were four or five carts to do so we get them all up and it's fine and we're, we're dragging behind and uh, so, you know, there's accounting stuff too, but then there's an error in the accounting. So there's a lot more work to do on that side. And then the manager, as if he had planned it this way, because he was way too excited and way too happy when he said, oh, wait, I forgot. 
And uh, it was when Toys R Us had the uh, the ticket system where if you had a high dollar item like video games or, uh, you know, some of the big like Power Wheels things, you buy, you would take a ticket, like a little paper ticket to the register and then you'd go to a desk after you paid, you'd give them the ticket with the receipt and then the person would go and get it from the back, bring it to you. So he walked behind the uh, the desk where you brought the tickets and he's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Earlier today, we had another cart. Uh, so we just ran out of space. So we put it here. So there's another cart and it is like overflowing with reshop. And it's got, you know, like the little, you know, the little plastic uh, candy canes with the candy inside and all this holiday crap. And he says, oh, well, you know, we can't go until somebody puts this up. Plus, we also have a bunch of other stuff that we need to do with this accounting stuff. So, um, you know, sorry, I can't leave until this is done. And so I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I said, we need a bunch of hands for both. So everybody's going to basically have to do both. And I said, well, here's what I propose. I said, I'm the fastest reshop returner. So what I'm going to do is I will take this cart and I will go put it back on the shelf. Uh, and you guys, the rest of like however many people you need to do the accounting part, you can work on the accounting part. Everybody else can go home because there's no point in keeping everybody here when we don't need everybody. I, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I will take the hit for the team. And everybody, no, you don't have to do that. And I was like, I promise, just trust me, like this is going to be fine. So, you know, they let two or three people go home. Two or three people stayed for the accounting part and I took the reshop card. So I got four, five, six items and it was just a mess of everything and you know there's a bunch of temp employees for seasonal that they just don't care and that was the job where i really stopped caring uh about like seasonal people i would tell them like i don't want to learn your name because in two months you're going to be gone anyway so i would call people by like their most defining characteristic so there was a guy uh that looked like a young chef boy rd so i called him chef boy rd uh, there was name tag number one and name tag number two, uh, Gary Busey, because the guy was basically just forehead and teeth. Um, so, uh, yeah, colorful cast of characters. But so I've got the, 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 the cart full of reshop and I'm just getting frustrated with it because I'm just like, it never ends. There's like a million tiny little, you know, candy item, like a bag of candy or whatever. And I'm just, I'm getting so sick of it. So I devised this plan because I just want to go home. And uh, it feels like a like a sadomasochistic uh, plot by the manager. So I said, uh, OK, we have these in the uh, the clothing section because uh, it was like kids clothing. There was um, uh, a fitting room that had two little like dressing rooms side by side and nobody ever used them. Nobody ever did anything with them. So I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this shopping cart and I pushed it into the fitting room and I locked the door and I slid out underneath the door and I left it. And I said, Oh, but I'm going to, I'm going to show back up and I'm not going to have a cart. So they're going to realize something's up. So, uh, there's a team for truck and they always put like seven or eight carts, uh, in the back to unload trucks. So I just pulled one of those empty carts out and walked it back up and I picked up, well, I had like one item that I saved out and I was just like, as I walked up, I like dropped, I hung it up on the shelf and I'm like, there we go, guys, you know, got it all done. You're welcome. You know, team hero right here. We can all go home. And I kind of forgot about it. And so that was like, you know, end of November. So like early December. So like December rolls on January, February, we go through March. I completely forget about all of it. I have no recollection that I even did it. So I asked off for a day in April and I had some day off. Uh, my friends and I were going to get together in town and do something. And uh, it was actually for uh, the date. You would go back and look at the date because it was WrestleMania 25. And we were all going to go to uh, the, the, the beat ups in town and watch that. And so I requested it off like, in February, my manager, the boss was like, yeah, sure. No problem. And then later on, he says, oh, yeah, no, I've scheduled an all staff meeting. So everybody has to be in attendance at that meeting. And he picked that Sunday. And I said, yeah, but I've already asked for the day off. 
and he said, you've given it to me. And he said, it's an all staff meeting. It's mandatory. So you're going to have to be there. And I said, well, I've already, uh, you know, paid money for what we're doing. And our stuff's already been bought. So I'm not going to be there because you've already approved it. Like I've got it in, in writing. And so I was not there. So I go uh, in town and uh, watch it. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I get a text that night, like late that night. And uh, it's from somebody at work, one of my coworkers. And they're like, dude, you will not believe what happened. And I'm like, what happened at the meeting? Obviously, big news from the staff meeting. Like, something went down. What's up? Like, what's the big news? And so apparently what happened was uh, the store manager, the man, the boss, announced that there was going to be a big remodel. And, uh, you know, that store had been chosen as like a, an updated store. They were going to put in a bunch of new stuff, new, um, you know, design stuff. It was going to be like one of the forefront uh, of like the new designs for the stores we were going to be like not a test store but like one of the earlier stores to get the rollout of this big giant remodel um you know going to add in a bunch of square foot like all kinds of stuff just like rearrange how they do stuff to get a lot more uh floor space and a lot less um uh back space so we were going to have it was just going to be great like modernize everything and so he said, you know, hey, I gathered everybody around and he said, you know, to celebrate this, you know, one of the first things that we're doing is we are going to uh, put up, you know, this brand new fitting room section and all that stuff. And uh, so he had people in there and he said, as a first thing that I'm going to do for everybody, like to show you know, how big of a deal this is, we're going to tear down these fitting rooms and we're going to, you know, get ready to put up new ones. And, um, so they took down the fitting room and sure enough, there's that shopping cart with all the Christmas stuff in it. And it's the first week of, it's the beginning of April. And so he like blows a gasket, you know, he has smoke coming out his ears and everything. And, uh, so he's, and he's like, I know it's an all staff meeting. So I know whoever, whoever did this is here. Who did it? I want to fess up right now or, you know, everybody's getting in trouble and stuff. So like, he was all mad and, and everybody left. And, um, and so I figured that it was going to be like, everybody was going to immediately know it was me. Uh, and, uh, I, I kept it to myself for the entire time that I worked there, uh, that it was me. And, um, but it was, it was totally me and, uh, nobody ever figured it out. So I feel like the statute of limitations is over. Uh, and I can finally admit that. So uh, if you are watching this and you worked with me at Toys R Us, uh, they know that that was me. And I don't feel bad about it. Uh, I don't really apologize. So um, if you have a fun retail story like that, share it with me. Put it in the comments and tell me about something fun that happened. Um, until next time, uh, I am Chris. You can hear me uh, every week on the FWB podcast. Uh, so you can check that out. Or, uh, of course, Mondays on the Bonafide or Bogus Trivia Show. So until next time I see you on Sit Down, Stand Up. See you later.